Hi everybody, um, this is Roger with uh, his uh, quadcopter. Um, this small little video is going to show you uh, some basic information around uh, a quadcopter setup and components. Um, yes, you can find a lot on the internet, but I find that uh, a lot of basic information is missing or scattered around. Uh, but first, there's not enough information on the internet on what proven components are, components that work well together. Um, here you see a list of what I bought. The Turnigy Tail and Quadcopter Carbon Fiber Frame. It's a very good frame. Um, the Hobby King Power Distribution Board. Uh, I use it uh, in, in a neat way. Uh, you will see that a little bit later. Um, Turnigy 2215J 900KV Brushless Motors. Um, they work very well with 10 times 4.7 props and the Turnigy Basic 25 Amps. Um, they're also uh, uh, great value. So these are the basic components. Proven uh, works very well. You will see that a little bit later how stable the quadcopter is. Not on the list is my KK 2.0 board, uh, the Captain Cook board. Uh, you'll see that a little bit later. Okay. So here the quadcopter on the inside, uh, the cover is now gone, you see how I've made the cover, it's a microwave um, uh, small little basket that I, uh, that I took. Um, it's very important to cover up your KK board because water kills it immediately, uh, it's very important to keep it dry. Here you see the setup, you see that the power distribution board is here upside down and on top of that the KK board so the foam of the power distribution board uh, holds the vibration uh, dampens the vibration and you see that the board is loosely connected not not completely fit um, I find it works very well okay when I turn the board around you see that I've uh, took new um, bolts here uh, to increase the uh, the width between the bottom and the upper plate and then my four controllers uh, can be placed in the middle um, there's enough space there for the four controllers you need to uh, be a little bit creative with uh, with all the wires but as you see here the wires run through the beams and pop out on the other end you also see the wires for the LEDs and here are the LEDs you can buy them at Hobby King also. Please take care when you solder them. Um, you can easily um, make a false connection and then they, uh, they will spark. And funny enough, they, they, won't, they won't burn, uh, but they will spark. There's, there will be smoke. So take care when you, when you do that. There's an adhesive tape underneath. So um, I recommend LEDs. You will see a little bit later why. Uh, okay, so this is the uh, the bottom side. Okay, the power is on, and now you see the LEDs. Red is um, uh, the back side of the quadcopter. Blue, the front side. It's uh, it's great. You can fly at night, and you always know what uh, what the back and the front side of your quadcopter is. Um, I forgot to mention, I've got my voltage uh, alarm here, $3.49 I believe. Uh, make sure you have one, it will make a beeping sound when uh, the juice is up. And um, it's important uh, to keep your, uh, your, quad, uh, your, your, your lipos uh, alive. Now an important question of course is the basic um, setting. Uh, please note this is a 1.5 firmware and I will run through the menu. Uh, you may not see it but I will at least um, talk you through it. The roll and pitch uh, has a P gain of 50, a P limit of 100, I gain of 25 and I limit of 20. So that is for pitch and for roll. The yaw is 50, 20, 50 and 10. And that is your basic setting. Uh, your self level setting 
basic is 60 60 zero, zero. now the higher that number the more control you have and I find 60 with the self level I find it uh, is, is, is doing very well now the settings that I just showed you um, are the basic settings it's all what you need to to to, to get the, the thing in the air and uh, move it around uh, quite stable of course you need to uh, select X mode uh, you need to do a sensor test you need to calibrate your sensors uh, make sure that uh, that you do that on a, on a flat uh, uh, surface and one of the most important things to do is to calibrate your ESC's all at once there's enough video material on YouTube uh, to uh, to uh, see how you do that but if you calibrate your ESC's uh, independently and not all at once uh, you will have huge problems and your quadcopter will wobble I will show you a little bit later uh, you can do a very simple test to see if your ESC's are calibrated right all the four engines need to start turning at the same time and I will show you that later okay so um, maybe some very obvious uh, information in this video uh, but at least it shows you the the most basic information that you need to have to start uh, going start buying your stuff at hobby king and putting it together and and start with this basic setting once you're up and running uh, you can start to um, to change the uh, the setting okay we're now outside i'm going to show you what good esc calibration uh, looks like first uh, however i'm going to uh, arm my quadcopter it's armed now and then you will see that uh, when I throttle up the four engines all four start at exactly the same time and that is extremely important if your ESC's are not calibrated uh, collectively at once then um, they won't start up at the same time and your quadcopter will wobble a lot Okay, I will now fly the quadcopter. Um, I can only hoover because I've, I don't have enough uh, space, but you will see how stable uh, the quadcopter is. Okay, you see how stable the quadcopter is? This is with no hands. Of course it always will drift a bit because of the wind. But it is, uh, it's also very responsive at 60-60 itself level. You see that I can, I can really fly it. By the way, the whole shot is at self level. And uh, I find 60-60 is a very good... Uh... Okay, now uh, this was uh, the small little video. Hope you enjoyed it. Good luck with your quadcopter and happy landing.